first night we brought our baby home, we ended up calling 911. Hello, to the people of the world. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Anayasa yarabun. Ahlan sa ahlan. This is Justin. Sarah. And our baby boy, our first baby boy. In today's video, we'll be talking about postpartum update for our baby boy, as well as name reveal for our baby park number three. We are filming this on the 19th of April, which means our baby boy is 19 days old. 18 days. 18 days and some. 18 days old. Sure. Because I don't count the day that he's born as day one. I count the next day as day one, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the hospital does the same. So he's 18 days old today. Oh, look at this boy. And we tried to film this while he's sleeping, otherwise you will hear him crying nonstop. <laughs> So for those of you who have not seen our birth vlog with baby park number three here, our very first boy, um, you can check it out on here. You said it's here, right? So yeah, check out the link up there and we'll also include the link um, in our description box below so that you guys can watch that birth vlog back and then find out how differently this birth went because despite the fact that this is our third baby, you would think by that time that we would know how to use, I mean, when to go to the hospital. We didn't. All right, what happened? I tested positive for group B strep, which means I would need to be hooked up to an IV um, antibiotics uh, prior to baby's delivery to make sure that, you know, baby does not, because baby does not have the immune system developed yet in order to combat it in case he or she uh, is delivered vaginally and might possibly get contaminated with the group B strep. Might so, catch might catch the virus yes. on his way out. Or her way out. Right. Right. So for each of my first two pregnancies, I had been hooked to the antibiotics, but we did not arrive to the hospital in time before the babies came out. This time around, as soon as my contractions were close enough apart, what were they? At one point, it was three minutes apart. But it, but the, in, within that same hour, it was also like 15, 30 minutes apart. So I was like, it's pretty irregular. But Justin was like, we should just go. Let's go as early as enough for us to get that first course of IV antibiotics in. Because otherwise, they would have to keep us at the hospital way longer so that they can observe baby after his birth. <laughs> to make sure baby didn't catch the group The virus, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we got sent home because uh, she wasn't dilated enough. Yeah, there it was, was only three centimeters di dilated. I think you need to be at least six centimeters before they admit you into the labor room. Five. Yeah. Something somewhere and, around there. And you weren't progressing. You're just stuck at three centimeters. So they that's why they sent us home and said come back. Yeah, later. and sorry if it wasn't clear to some of you guys as to why we got sent back. Another reason was that as soon as I got to the hospital, my contractions stopped. Literally, I was there for like a good two hours and I only had like one contraction in that span of two hours. I don't know what happens. Although we had like one of the most amazing, phenomenal birth, delivery, labor team um, for baby park number three here. We, um, I felt like this time around, the nurses did not really, or one of the nurses did not really count down with me was it counting down it was counting up did not really count with me when it was time to push and i really really i didn't realize how much i appreciated it or how much i needed it so i would i had to tell the nurse like please count with me because i never know when it's when i should stop pushing and take a deep breath and then go again like push again so yeah i had to remind her can you please count from one to ten because <laughs> otherwise I'm like, she's like okay push and I'm like pushing and I'm like, can I breathe now? Like, I don't know, right? So, it yeah, really you can, helps. You can really breathe anytime you feel like breathing when you no. are out of breath, no? Mm -hmm. I was still pushing even when I was out of breath. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't reach 10 yet. So yeah, um, just something I didn't notice before that I needed this time around was that I needed to remind the nurse, please count with me from 1 to 10 so I know to push to keep pushing for those 10 seconds and then to breathe in afterwards. Our baby boy was born in a sack, an amniotic sack. That's the first time I've seen with among the three birds. Yeah. When I saw it, it looked, what it reminded me was from the scene from Matrix when Keanu Reeves is like 
waking up for the first time from his tub of fluid <laughs> and he's covered in some kind of gooey stuff oh wow <laughs> that, that, that's what it looked like apparently it was a rare event um, I had to look it up because of a bunch of our viewers who had seen the birth vlog were mentioning about how oh my goodness your baby was born and call or I think it's Latin for like in the sack or in a veil, something like that. They call it like a veiled birth or a mermaid birth. And apparently those are one of the rarest forms or types of live births ever. It happens in one in 80,000 live births where the baby is born with the amniotic sac or bag of water still intact. So I had to look that up because I was like, what, what is this? What are our viewers talking about? And I was surprised to find out how rare it was. I thought it just happened like one in three pregnancies because <laughs> that's what happened with us. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate a lot of our viewers and subscribers for all your positive comments and for sharing that piece of information with us so that, you know, it piqued my curiosity for sure and I had to like look into it. I was like, what are they talking about? And I was surprised to find out how rare it was and yeah, a lot of you guys were saying that there's a superstition around it about how it basically means that of course, it's may, it may not be true, true, it's just a myth, but it basically means that baby is protected from danger or that baby will never drown or that um, he is destined for greatness. So I was like, oh my goodness, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take all of them. Because he was born in a sack, we are not, at, well, he was not at risk mm. of getting strep B. Yes. So that's why we were sent home earlier than 24 hours. Yeah, he basically came out um, 48 minutes past midnight on April Fool's Day of this year. And the pediatrician gave the go signal for us to be discharged as early as, I would say, 4 p.m., but of course, um, the nurses still were in the process of getting the papers prepared, so that's why it took long. The same day, by the way, and yes, we did not use a wheelchair, and it's not standard. I mean, of course, if I needed it, they would provide the wheelchair for me to leave the hospital in, but uh, I did not need it. I was walking just fine. <laughs> and our baby boy was born with his cord wrapped around his neck twice and once around his arm. Which arm? I think it was his left arm. You saw it, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So that was a little bit scary. The reason they kept us in the hospital the second time we went in um, with the irregular contractions is because they noticed that with each contraction that was lasting about one to two minutes long, um, baby's heart rate would drop significantly and sometimes even disappear. But it's I think it disappeared because he's moving away from the actual monitor. Right. But yeah, that was scary. It's almost like he's trying to hang himself in there. <laughs> it's like, if you break this water, I'm a hang. <laughs> so I'm really, really glad that I decided to opt out of the doctor's offer to break my water or the nurse's offer to break my water. They said that it would help speed up the labor process. And I'm really glad that I just let myself, I said, just let it happen naturally, just like with the first two births. Because, wow, was that ever a rare event. I wish we had photos for you guys. Oh my gosh, some of you are like, where are the photos from our birth vlog? And I'm like, we don't have photos of the actual of baby being in the sack because our doctor, um, it was her first time to ever see it. A baby born in, in a water, in a, our bag of water, still intact. So she was kind of like in a hurry to rescue baby just in case. So as soon as baby came out, she was like, oh, What's going on? Why is the bag still intact? And she like ripped the bag open to make sure baby's able to breathe, right? Because he's still in that water. Um, and yeah, thankfully she did that because baby came out breathing. <laughs> but there was a pause before he cried, so that kind of made me nervous. But apparently they were busy untangling the cord yeah. from his neck. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's pretty scary. And Justin was also in shock when he saw it. Nobody, it never occurred to every, anybody to like, hey, take photos. And even the doctor told me later on in the postpartum unit, she was like, you know what? I wish I had taken a photo. <laughs> I just have never seen anything like it. And then her partner of a doctor, right? There was another doctor there, the male doctor. He said that 
this is only the second time he's ever seen it happen in his years of experience so yeah unfortunately we don't have a photo <laughs> and if you guys seen our birth vlog you noticed that i fainted in the room <laughs> this was after the baby was born it's about maybe around 10 minutes after the baby was born that's when mm -hmm. i started feeling Faint. lightheaded I, my i felt like my head was a balloon floating around the room mm -hmm. even though i was standing still and i was holding onto something I felt like my head was just swaying like a floating balloon. So I had to sit down before I collapsed and hit my head somewhere. And one of the nurses saw that I was pale and offered the uh, juice. She's like, how about you lay down? You lay down, I get you juice. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a combination of lack of sleep because we were going to the hospital past midnight that, earlier that day. And even the night before, we didn't sleep because we thought we had to go to the hospital. Yeah, and then and then after that, we were on the edge. Like, mm. thought, is this the minute that we need to rush out, out the door? So we couldn't really sleep either. Yeah, and we stayed in the hospital till 3 in the morning, right? And also another thing is the, the just... Every time you try to push, mm. I can see your... What? Vaginal opening, like oh, vaginal pulsating, opening. like. <laughs> you mean it was like swollen? Yeah, it was bulging. Swollen. It was bulging. bulging. Those and, were your and words. I, I couldn't, I couldn't look. I had to like do this. You're cause... like, oh god, I can see the head. <laughs> Did it's you a... see the head? No. Yeah, it, it's Ooh. like a, it's like seeing in the uh, the alien versus predator. I oh, mentioned gosh. this every Here single we time. Go again. <laughs> you know how the the, the alien <laughs> opens its mouth. <laughs> and then something else comes out, and then it opens its mouth. <laughs> it, it reminded me of that scene. He watches way too many alien movies. <laughs> but this time there wasn't as much blood as Chanel's birth. Or Sabrina. Sabrina's yeah. was the worst. I I remember seeing Chanel's birth where they have, they put like a like a doggy pad, like a absorbent pad there. Oh, the blue pad. Blue yeah, pads yeah, underneath yeah. you, the and liner. that that was like. It's soaked through and through, and not only that, there's a <laughs> there's too, too much blood that it can't absorb blood anymore. So there's puddle of blood <laughs> on top of that absorbent pad. DMI, you guys. I mean, you knew you were gonna watch a postpartum update. What did you think was gonna get discussed? <laughs> All the grossest things about our body fluids. So yay. <laughs> but this time, I didn't see that much blood. I think with each birth, I I felt like I was bleeding less and less after giving birth. When we went to the um, the recovery room after giving birth, they sent us to a non-private room. That means a room with the two beds. That means two mothers and two babies in there. Like a shared room. Separated by a curtain. But the the second bed was never occupied the entire time we were there. So this is first for us because mm. with the first two babies, we went to a private room where the room had only one bed. But it could have worked out as if it was a private <laughs> room because we never had to share the bathroom with anyone. Nobody showed up. I did we, not have a We never had to hear the baby crying on the other bed. side of the uh, curtain. Yeah. So luckily it ended up being like a private room. And also the thing that's different this time around is you didn't stick around to stay overnight mm -hmm. after baby was born. Yeah, because I had to... Rush I in. had to do my duties with the girls. What time was that when you drove home? Was it, it was five? five? Five in the morning, yeah. Oh my gosh. And then they woke up like 7.30 or 8? Yeah. Oh, wow. For those of you who weren't cl clear about who were taking care of our girls while we were giving birth, um, it was my sister. She came over with both her kids and spent the night, two nights actually, at our home just until we can get things settled and to keep the girls company. She helped with the bedtime care, yeah. And she had to take time off for the, the like a span of... That week, I that think. That week, yeah, because we don't know which day we're gonna rush to the hospital. Yeah, and it worked out. We were afraid that baby would come out way later. Yeah, because if baby were to come out on like the 4th, the 4th of April, because that means she'd be going back to work by then. Yes. That means we don't, we can't use her help to watch yeah. the kids. And then it would be chaos because then we'd have to call her at work and say, yo, can you rush here? We need you. We need to rush to the hospital. So yeah. So I'm glad it worked out. So when he was born, he had a little bit of jaundice, but it mm -hmm. cleared out within hours yeah like mild jaundice just yeah. like our daughters 
Um, and yeah, he actually, so it's normal for baby, newborn babies to lose weight in the first 14 days of life or is it 10 days of life um, because it's mostly re uh, water retention and luckily usually babies regain their birth weight at about the 14 day mark um, after their birth and he was cluster feeding so much um, I was exclusively I am exclusively breastfeeding um, so he cluster fed so much the first two nights that he came home that um, he regained all of his birth weight and then some by day five so John does shows up as a yellow hue in their skin and their eye the whites of their eyes yeah too. but you're supposed to poop all that out so their poop mm. is yellow it's like a yellow curry yellow <laughs> just bright yellow <laughs> right so during the couple first days his poop was bright yellow yeah. that means he's pooping out all the jaundice and so he, he all the bilirubin yeah, that he, causes jaundice yeah yeah he was cleared to, within a day or two which is nice. I feel like with each baby, their jaundice levels are like lesser and lesser. Yeah, I think with Sabrina, it took her more than a week oh to clear gosh. out. But yeah, she was, I would say she had the highest level, which was still in the yellow portion of the jaundice chart. But yeah, luckily none of our babies required phototherapy. So at least we didn't have to go back to the hospital for that treatment. He was born with a slight tongue tie, mm. which could translate to pinching your nipple when he's breastfeeding. Yeah, so my nipples were basically about to blister, but they haven't. Um, and yeah, I had to go see a lactation consultant at the maternity clinic after his birth. Um, and then that's what they told me was that if, I fe if I'm feeling discomfort, then they will, they will nip his tongue tie um, to help loosen his latch. But if I'm comfortable with it, he, the doctor felt like the tongue tie was not thick enough or not um, too far towards the tip of his tongue enough to be of concern. And he doesn't feel like it'll um, affect his speech either. So I made the decision to not nip his tongue tie because then I think shortly after that, I started becoming comfortable. I just had to find the right position thanks to the doctor there. He suggested the koala hold. Look it up, you guys. It's so cute. <laughs> I can't demonstrate because he's sleeping right now. He might but, wake yeah. up if you try to move his position. Yeah, the koala hold helped me a lot with my left breast um, when it comes to breastfeeding. Shana is the only one who got tongue tie clipped. Yeah. The doctor said Sabrina has mild tongue tie, but you weren't feeling any pinching, so we, we didn't clip it. Or at least I wasn't familiar with the whole yeah. latch thing. And baby's cord stump fell out day 10? day 12? day 11 day 11 early morning Very close. like 3 in the morning or something like that I was in the middle of changing his diaper and I was like oh Papa it fell out <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to pull it out or anything like that right? you're just, supposed to let it dry it's gonna dry up and it's mm. gonna just crumble and it's gonna fall off so we did not give him his first bath until day 18 <laughs> just yesterday <laughs> No, wait, did we give him his bath just yesterday, right? Yeah. We gave him his first first bath yesterday. We were in no rush. Like I said, he did not have blood all over him. And he smelled so sweet. He still smells sweet. He still smells sweet. But now his hair is spiking up because he had a bath. But we'll try to give him a bath maybe just once a week this time around. Because it's not like he sweats. He only pees at, on himself. That's a whole different story, you guys. Oh my gosh. Maybe I might as well mention it. Okay, so what you did was uh, you, you lifted his legs up to clean his bum. To clean bum. his bum. But while doing so, his PP was also lifted up. Yes. And, and then his PP was pointing towards his face. Right there. It and, didn't land on his face. It landed on his ear. On in, onto his oh face. Oh my gosh. And this is the middle of the night, so you can't even see. I just, I'm like, at the corner of my eye, I was like, wait, was that a stream? And then I felt him and he was like... <laughs> like frazzled like what the heck was that <laughs> like he peed on his face so yeah hasn't peed on your face yet right no you he always would stream like a you always remember to stay a little bit off to the side when yeah. you're changing change his, his diaper to... stand on his side don't stand directly facing his bum <laughs> so, yeah. let's talk about your stitches oh my stitches 
I don't. I think they're still there. It is you only day. You had a second degree tear. Very mild second degree tear. It was more so a first degree tear this time. What helped was that the nurse actually put some warm compress on my perineal area down there. Um, to each time I was pushing, and I felt like that heat actually helped with um, uh, promoting circulation and with reducing the swelling or the bulge every time I was pushing. The tear is on the minimal side this time around uh, than with my first two pregnancies, births. So yeah, I'm really happy. And also I feel like I'm bleeding way less. Like I would say by the 10th day postpartum, I felt like I was only having period amount of bleeds. Like I, I was only changing my pad twice a day. As early as day five, I was changing it twice a day, but it was like really soaked at the time. So I'm really proud. I feel like each pregnancy is getting easier. The only difference is, the only difference is, this time around, I felt my contractions were a lot stronger and lasted a lot longer before his birth and even after he was born. The after pains, my you goodness. You still get contraction after he yeah, boo. came out? Every time. That's strange. Yeah, it's not just him. It was the, that way with every baby, but with him it was stronger. And I felt like with each pregnancy, I mean each birth, each baby, it was only getting stronger and stronger. And they're saying that it's normal because it takes longer for my uterus to contract to its original size. Because of my previous births and my previous babies having stretched it already before, it's now stretched even more so. So yeah, that's why. And Those are uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, and here's a story. On the first night we brought our baby home, we ended up calling 911. <laughs> oh, no. Tell yes. me about that. Oh my gosh, you guys. But yeah, basically we had to call uh, the ambulance to our home. So the first night we took a uh, baby home, what happened? They said to make sure, the nurses sent us home saying, make sure you don't go past the three hour mark um in between feeds because baby needs to be fed as regularly as possible no matter what even if he's sleeping wake him up so i was like okay sure of course with all the excitement from you know coming bringing baby home from the hospital and all that i lost track of time also i was in a zombie state and adrenaline rush was through the roof for me um a lack of sleep and all that i lost track of time and baby actually went five hours with no feed so by the time I remembered, I said, like, oh, he's probably hungry. Let's wake him up. I should just wake him up. I woke him up and I found out that he, um, first of all, couldn't open up his eyes. I know he's a newborn, you guys. And you're like, oh, newborns don't normally open their eyes up. But he has been opening up his eyes as soon as he came out of me. <laughs> so that was new to me. I was like, he's not opening his eyes. He's well, not able. at least able... one eye. Cause he, had a... he, was yeah, the one, he was a one-eyed pirate. The other one was too puffy. But yes, uh, he was also not able to let out a cry. He's just going, eh, 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 but not a full-on cry. I put him right on my boob and did everything I could to wake him up, and it seemed like he was drowsier. So to me, it was concerning, and I didn't know what to do. I asked my sister for her opinion. She's like, you know, just call 811, and Justin was there too. And 811 is a health link hotline. Yeah. Um, I think for the first two weeks after giving birth to baby... There's an exclusive, it wasn't 811 actually, it, it was an exclusive hotline to reach um, a public health nurse by phone that would um, address any newborn or post baby concerns. So I called that direct hotline and they told, the nurse who had picked up had told me that if baby's drowsy and not able to wake up or let out a cry, that is a cause for concern and that I should call an ambulance because um, I don't know if you guys know this but I was being monitored for gestational diabetes um, they said I've always fallen in under the pre-diabetic category but they treated me as though I had gestational diabetes just to be on the safe side and that baby sugars were perfectly normal except for the very first sugar result when he first came out of me um, which was only low by 0.1 I don't know what the <laughs> units are, but it was a little bit low 
And so they had to test him throughout our stay in the hospital and they found, oh, he was his blood sugars were normal. So he did not have, or he was not compensating for the, di the gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Um, so yeah, I was afraid that his sugar might be low this time around because it took five hours between feeds. So called the ambulance, um, they rushed here, how long? Seven minutes. Took seven minutes for them to get here, at least we know, in case of emergency. Take seven minutes. <laughs> but yeah, I felt it was fast. Rain was like, nah, if a baby was choking, they're done. <laughs> but yeah, they came. There were two male paramedics that entered with their shoes on. Of course, it was an emergency, so we're like, okay, it's fine. I mean, we only mopped the floor, so our baby came out. And yeah, they addressed the baby. And the funny thing is, as soon as they arrived, um, baby started sucking on my breast and actually feeding. Baby started crying, he let out a loud cry, and yeah, he was actually more awake. So, so 911 responders were like, so what do you want us to do? And they were like, so I understand this must be really challenging, this is your first? I'm like, no, it's my third. He's like, hmm? <laughs> I know, you would think by now that we have three kids, that we actually are more experienced, but you guys, it does not matter, I was still panicked. And I still felt like I didn't know what I was doing. It's just everything was forgotten with each birth every single time. So yeah, it was a very scary experience, but I'm glad that they didn't have to take him to the hospital. I'm glad he did not need any treatment. By the way, they did test his sugar, the paramedics did, and uh, his sugar was perfect. It was double the passing score. So they said, it's not low blood sugar. He probably was just really sleepy, really tired from the whole birthing process, and that's why he was harder to waken. And that comes to our final mm. topic of this video, which is name reveal of our baby part number three. Mm -hmm. So our baby boy's name is Jaden Park. That spells J-A-Y-D-E-N. So, we asked you guys to guess or suggest the name for our baby boy. Mm -hmm. And actually, some of them got it right. Yeah, surprisingly, even the spelling was perfect. So there's one person um, got the name right. And only had one guess. And only had the one guess <laughs> and got the spelling right. Uh, let me see if I have... Okay, yeah. it's Karen Mitchell. Wins the bragging rights for guessing our baby boy's name. Her name is very familiar. There were a couple other people who guessed the, the alternate spelling with the J-A-I. I. Or J-A-D-E-N. Right. Yeah. And his full name, including his Korean name, is Jaden Ji-hoon Park. Ji-hoon in Korean means teacher of wisdom. Nox. <laughs> So yeah, but what was your inspiration for this name? <laughs> um, the 90 Day Fiancé show where one of the contestants of the reality show was ji <laughs> He's Korean and he is so adorable and we're like, oh my goodness, that's such a pretty name for a boy. And it's very close to Justin's name and Jaden's name, right? So it's like Jaden, Justin, ji might as well. <laughs> right, so we wanted to have a J name for his first name, so we picked... Jaden, and we also want another J name for his Korean name, just like myself, because my Korean name is Junsik. Okay. So his Korean name should start with J as well. Mm -hmm. So we gave him Jihun. Yup, yup. We noticed, or doctors or nurses have noticed something about Jaden oh. that that none of our other kids had. Mm. It's rare condition for newborn babies. Again. It may or may not be concerning. We have to wait and see how it develops. I hope it's not concerning. None of our babies, as far as we know, have had it. We didn't know such, such condition even existed, so we had mm. to look it up when the nurse mentioned it. So. it. It was found out when the doctor did a head-to-toe assessment after... Like I would say a week after baby's birth. We will um, talk more on that in our next video. Hopefully by then we would have more answers as well. 
Uh, we're also really busy right now, but we will keep you guys posted in our next video as to what the updates are for our girls because something came up as well that is keeping us busy. But yes, let's show us our little baby lion. Baby lion. Uh -huh. Looks like me, right? Nah. <laughs> They're like, where'd his arms go? He's in a swaddle, you guys. Yeah, we need to keep his arms inside the swaddle, otherwise he get a uh, startle reflex. Yes, like and it he, wakes him up. He feels like he's like free falling, so he gets stuttered. Yeah, let's show his head. Look at the beautiful shape of his head, you guys. Oh my god, look at his hair, they're all sticking out. They're sticking out. Okay, to me, he has the most perfect sleeping face. Look at that. Yeah. But when he wakes up... <laughs> he, make, he likes to make faces. It's just the funniest thing in the world. When he wakes up, he has the most <laughs> suspicious he, look. He always looks at you as suspicious. Especially like, like, he gives you? you a side eye. <laughs> With one eye. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, who you? Text back. Does he look like me? Does he look like me? Does he look like me? Mm, so sweet. Oh, he smiled. Oh, he smiled. Did you catch that? Oh, the newborn sounds. My sister's obsessed with those sounds. Like, I missed the newborn sound and the stretches. There you go, the stretch. Oh my gosh, I hope I don't lose him. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> we would like to take this opportunity to thank every single one of you guys. Thank you, thank you for, with all our hearts. My goodness, you made our hearts melt. Um, yeah, you made me cry a few times, postpartum, post-baby hormones. But yes, thank you so much, you guys, for all of your congratulations, your well wishes, your compliments. Oh my goodness, your prayers, your thoughts, just your never-ending support. Thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you for continuing to follow us along, for bearing with us. Um, and yes, for basically just being there for us since day one. A bunch of you are like, we've been following your story since day one. And we are so appreciative and we could not. You guys have no idea how much it means to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys. We love you. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Until next time. Love you. Bye. Bye.